This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Shanta. Shanta is an entertainer, but she also loves to be entertained, which is why she has Flow TV brought to her through Flow's 100% Fiber to the Home Network. It's great for busy Shanta because she can control the time she watches her favorite shows, play back from the start in case she missed it, or even record with cloud video recording. And with her Flow Services bundle, enjoys much more for much less. Visit any Flow retail outlet. Call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One-of-a-kind connection. This is how we flow. Welcome to your Bobby List Today evening update for Thursday, June 16. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Thanks for joining us. Police are investigating the sudden death of a man at Bell Gully, St. Michael. Bobby Destiny understands that Sylvester Trotman had just arrived home from work and minutes into a conversation with the shopkeeper at Kaitro Bar, he collapsed and died. Investigations are continuing. A 43-year-old man will reappear tomorrow at the Holton Magistrates Court on seven charges following yesterday's accident, which occurred in Spitestown, St. Peter. Derek Schiller Noel of Batalis in the same parish made his first appearance today on charges including driving without a valid driver's license, driving without due care and reasonable consideration, without tax, without insurance, failing to register a motor vehicle and fraudulent use of number plates. The accident has left 13-year-old Zawadi Jilks, a student of the Alexandra School, nursing injuries. Police were on the beat in Britain's Hill this evening. They have been meeting with residents in the wake of recent gun crimes in the St. Michael community. Residents complained about the influx of drugs and firearms and called for more police surveillance as they welcomed the officers. Senior Superintendent Euclid Thompson agreed that there must be more interaction between police and residents as he promised that the force will be stepping up its presence in the area. He also called on other key groups to get involved in the fight against crime. Thompson specifically urged the church to do more than pray for peace. He wants religious figures to interact and assist young people in need. A 29-year-old man is grappling to pick up the pieces while a 99-year-old woman is counting her blessings after a fire at Waterhall Land destroyed two homes and damaged a third this morning. It's a nightmare for hotel worker Corey Brewster who lost all his possessions. That's everything. I lost everything. Everything. He ran on me and had a high boy to do some small repairs. Paint. Um, brand new marble company that I ain't get a print and get installed yet. Sinks, bathroom, fittings, all kind of different things. Yeah, yes, yes. The blaze, which occurred just after 8 a.m., was also tough on Rosalie Bailey. Bailey, who received her home back in February from Social Care Minister Steve Blackett, tells Barbados today the back of her home was damaged, but she's given thanks nevertheless. I have to thank God, because I don't know what happened. It happened just as I was reading my Bible. I was reading my Bible. I'm praying and asking God to deliver it from everything. But it happened in such a so sudden that I just couldn't understand what happened. The occupant of the second house destroyed is 38-year-old Caroline Bailey. She is still shocked at the incident. I hear everybody trying to tell me smoke in the yard. I swear somebody was just burning stuff, so I just went back in my bed and laid down. Then they tell me raw house burning, raw house, but that would be funny, burning. And when they bowled, well, my grandmother flew past me, but that's all I could see. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> but when they see, then they see smoke coming all through the house and everything. All they could holler road for, raw, raw. He answered me, but ain't that like he couldn't do neither. Bailey was later taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital for medical treatment. Put high taxes on fatty foods. That's the call from the director of the Chronic Disease Research Center, Dr. Lafayette Samuels, who says the government must step up 
to protect Barbadians from obesity that leads to non-communicable diseases. While delivering a lecture on the fight against NCDs in the Caribbean, Samuels insisted that all unhealthy foods should be severely taxed to make them less attractive. You have to change individual behavior, but you also have to create supportive environments around that and um, supportive health systems and the policies and the governance has to be right to create the environment where all these other things can happen. For example, when we talk about the need for multi-sectoral intervention, concretely let me give you an example. In the trade sector, we need fair trade, right? We need to make sure that the, the, the foods we import don't swamp the local market and our local farmers can in fact have a good market for their products. We need higher taxes on unhealthy foods, including and let me repeat it one more time, a tax on fatty food. I did not say to tax fat people, okay? There was a whole media storm about how Dr. Samuel said to tax fat people. I would not say that. I don't want to pay more taxes myself, right? So I am saying let's tax French fries because just like tobacco, the French fries going to give you a heart attack down the road and you may as well start saving money. Little by little, the government will start saving it for you so that you can pay for the heart attack when it comes, right? So unhealthy food, we need to tax it, not only to get the money, but to encourage people not to eat it. There's regional and international news after this short break. Get your paper, get your paper. Only 225, 220, who? For where? Nice bear still news. I don't read about that from Barbados today or since last night. That can only car do. 220, who? Barbados Today. News you can trust. To the region now, the David Simmons chaired commission of inquiry into the May 2010 security operation in West Kingston recommends that the government of Jamaica apologize in Parliament to Jamaicans for the excesses of the security forces. 73 civilians and a soldier died in the operation and the commission says a public apology is necessary in order to heal hurt feelings bitterness and resentment of the people of West Kingston. In addition, the commissioners are calling for those affected to become compensated without delay. Further afield, Britain is mourning after the brutal murder of Labour MP Joe Cox. Cox was shot and stabbed by an attacker who left her bleeding on the ground. Joe was attacked by a man who inflicted serious and sadly ultimately fatal injuries. Subsequently, there was a further attack on a 77-year-old man nearby who has sustained injuries that are non-life-threatening. Shortly afterwards, a man was arrested nearby by local uniformed police officers. Weapons, including a firearm, have also been recovered. At 1.48pm, Joe Cox was pronounced deceased by a doctor who was working with a paramedic crew that were attending to her serious injuries. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website, www.barbelistoday.bb. Also, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening. <laughs>